Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude again. Today I'm going to talk about Git Bisect, which is one of the coolest things Git can do. So I'm going to try to make it pretty quick. In the first half of the video, I'm going to show you visually what's going on with Git Bisect, and then we'll move over into a terminal um, to actually give you one working example of it. So uh, I'm just going to put up some images here to introduce the, the concept of Git Bisect to you. So I'm going to use an analogy from a some movie. I can't remember the name of it. If you know the one I'm talking about, put it in the comments below because it's driving me crazy. Um, but it's basically some dumb action movie like Da Vinci Code 7 or National Treasure 8 or Born Again Shell. And the premise is that in this movie, of course, there is a bad guy and he's got a bomb. And this particular bad guy puts a camera on the bomb so that he can tell the police and prove that he has a bomb and request money or whatever his demands are. So, of course, they have a bunch of scenes where the police are in what looks like a mission control and they have a camera on the bomb. And so, at one point, the police, they come up with this great idea, right? They said, hey, you know, this bomb is uh, somewhere in the city and because we can see the lighting around the bomb in the room because of the camera, maybe we could, you know, turn sections of the power grid on and off and then we could know where the bomb is kind of a cool idea right so you know this is my representation of a power grid and their plan is and they execute this in the movie it drives me crazy that they take one section of the grid and this black circle represents an outage of power in one section of the city one section at a time they cut power and they try to see if the lighting in the camera view changes. Well, that sounds great if you can flip it on and off quickly, but you know, as part of their story, it takes, I don't know, an hour and a half to bring the grid down and up, and there's just not enough time. And so this goes out and goes on through the whole movie, and it drives me crazy because this is a, a terrible search strategy, uh, given the problem that, that's presented to, uh, to the audience, and so it drove me crazy. And I wanted to talk about it because this is a perfect analogy for Git Bisect. So when I say Git Bisect, what we're talking about is a binary search. So in this example, you might think, you know, if, if one of these guys had half a brain, he'd say, hey, instead of doing one of these uh, grid uh, sections of the power grid at a time, why don't we turn off half of them and then see if we see a response in the window? Um, that way you can eliminate large sections of the grid all at a time. So in this example, we're turning off half the grid, the left side, visually represented, of course, and nothing happens. So, oh, and then we do the right half of the grid and we see the view change. So in this example here, we're doing a binary search and we've already eliminated the left half of all the grids and the bomb cannot be contained anywhere in that grid. So this uh, process lets us eliminate the entire left side. And then the process continues. Take what's left and bisect it. Cut it in half. Uh, so you basically you turn off the power to all these grid sections. And we don't see the, the lighting change. So we turn off the other half and the lighting changes. And as you might expect, we can then eliminate this section. So I just wanted to show you, so that's basically how it works. So you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I, you know, it iterates a handful of times for a, a grid. This is what, 9 by nine by 10, so 90 in this example grid. Um, and eventually you end up with the exact grid that the bomb is in. So I forget the name of this movie, but it drove me crazy watching it. Um, so why did I bring this up? Well. This power grid is very similar to, uh, this example is very similar to what Git Bisect does. So the, the process that we just did is called a binary search. And as you can see, it's way faster than a linear search of all individual sections of the grid. 
So the search range in this example is the whole grid. I bring this up because we define a search range later. And the test is whether or not the lighting changes. So these two things, a search range and a test, are basically the core of what you need to, to use a, a git bisect. So now I'd like you to imagine instead of uh, these sections of this power grid, each section is actually a commit in a repository. Um, and so, you know, really we're just talking about exploding the view instead of a grid. It looks like our nice uh, commit trees that you should be familiar with by now if you've watched some of my other videos. And, you know, th this is a very simple tree, right, where there's only a handful of commits. You know, the real commit history in a project is going to look bigger than this. I just wanted to show um, that it... it you know, large projects contains thousands of commits, potentially hundreds of branches. And so the bisection of the tree isn't something a human ever really wants to do. Uh, so when you need to find what, a, what commit introduced a certain behavior, that's when you want to use git bisect. And now I say a certain behavior. This is the test that we're talking about. And I'll go through an example of this, but the reason I say a certain behavior is because typically you need to get bisect for things that you can't identify in the source. So a good example might be, let's say you your project has an application and all of a sudden one of the buttons in your application stopped working. And if you don't have a testing system, you don't know when it stopped working. So you need to find out what exact commit introduced that problem. So that's a behavior. I say behavior because you can't look at the git log and see the source. Like, you want to find the source code that caused the problem, but you don't know what to look for, right? So that's the reason why I say behavior because, like, let's say the if you wanted to define your behavior as, oh, I want to know when this file was last committed. Well, you can get that from the git log. So you don't need to go through a bisect to figure out if a file exists or not. Um, because git log will tell you that. So this is for things that you can't otherwise find, usually because they are a behavior of your executable. So when we do a git bisect, the user will define a search range with at least one good commit and one bad commit. And then git will handle the bisecting of the tree, which is awesome. So in this example, this green commit is one good commit, this red commit is one bad commit. And like I said before, we have to define the test, the test of the behavior. And so the user defines the test and executes it at every commit, and they mark whether or not the, task, the test passes or fails, if it's good or bad as you go, and Git will handle bisecting the tree. So sections of the Git history are eliminated until the exact commit that was intro uh, that introduced the behavior is isolated. So just like we did in the grid, Git will check out to particular commits and automatically eliminate sections via binary search across branches if it needs to. Uh, well, I take that back. Branches, watch my uh, branches aren't branches videos, and you'll know why I took that back. But basically, it will bisect across merged commits if necessary and it will eventually find the exact commit that the behavior was introduced in. Okay, so went through that pretty quick. Uh, I wanna flip over to an actual example that I have purposefully crafted. Now let's go ahead and write this down. So, okay, this is my Hello World repo. I am on the master branch, and just to show you, I have an alias that just does a pretty print for git log. And it shows that our history kind of looks a little bit like this. I'm on the master branch. There's a handful of commits here. And if I do a make, um, it, basically all this does is create a couple classes and print some stuff to the screen. Uh, but you will notice that the executable that's created is called hello. If I try to run that, ooh, I get a segmentation fault. And so I've introduced this on purpose because this is the, the behavior we're talking about, right? So this is a simulation of you doing some work. Something went wrong. You don't know where in your history it went wrong, and you want to find out. So just, just to be clear, this is going to be a very simple example 
we have linear history in this example but I just wanted to show you going through the commands and executing it what's really powerful about this is that it can work uh, in huge projects with a whole bunch of branches and uh, it, it's really powerful stuff. It'll let you search the commit tree uh, quite quickly. So bring it back up the git log view in the tree view. Um, I'm going to, so the first thing we need to do, right, is we need to have our test defined and our range to search. And for our range to search, we just need one good commit and one bad commit. So we know we're on a bad commit, right? Because I tried to run and we seg vaulted. So let's go ahead and back up. You can see I made a whole bunch of development commits here. Um, you can actually see the bisect that I did earlier. But anyway, let's go back to this commit. And we'll see if it's broke here. So we do a make and we do a hello. Okay, so it builds and runs at this commit. So we know that this 832 commit is a good commit. And we know, since I was on master, let me check back out to master to show you, this F104 commit is the bad commit. So we, we can define our search range, and our test is simply, does it run, does it seg fault or not? So we are all ready to, st uh, we're ready to start a git bisect. So the way you do it is you do git bisect start, and then we define which commits uh, are good and bad commits and then git will automatically start bisecting the tree so remember our good commit was i have it copied here the 832 commit and our bad commit is the f10 commit and you'll see that right away git has already changed our head so it's already checked out to a D70 commit, and it says we have four revisions left to test after this. It's estimating how many more bisections there will be until it finds what exact commit this was introduced in. So just to, to remind you what our tree looks like here, uh, we just checked out to D70. Our bad commit was this one. Our good commit was this one. And as you can imagine, it checked out to about halfway here. So we do a make at this commit and we run and we notice that we seg fault. So this is where we tell git was this a good or a bad commit? git bisect bad. Then it automatically uh, eliminates, let's scroll back up here. So we checked out to this commit and it deter we told it that this commit was bad. We started with this bad commit. So everything from here to here doesn't even need to be tested because the, the tree was bisected. So now it's going to start looking in this range. And so it checks us out to C44, which is in that range, as you might imagine. And let's test again. Make, let's run. Hello. And it runs. Fantastic. So we're getting warmer. So what we do is we say get bisect good because uh, we did not seg fault. Okay, now it's telling us our message again. Zero revisions left. This is the last step. We're going to test 2FFB. It either introduced it or it didn't. Hello? And this one is good. So when we type git bisect good on our last revision, git bisect will print the exact commit that introduced the problem. So it's the D70E commit. Now if we do a git show on this, we'll see what the problem was. And I know exactly where to look because I introduced this on purpose. Uh, we introduced the dereference of a null pointer which causes the seg fault in D70E. So it leaves us uh, checked out to where we were. So I'm just going to check back out to master. Um, and it was, let's see, D70E. So going back to the view we had before, we know that this is the bad commit. So something was introduced here. Okay, guys, uh, kind of ran through that pretty quickly. I hope it's useful. I just want to say one more thing about... Um, how you 
design your repo and your testing architecture so that git bisect can be useful so c consider this in fact i actually went through this originally and found that so there's a reason why these commits I didn't include in the bisect. That's because there's a handful of commits that, you know, this is a repo I just uh, make to show you guys things. There's some commits in here that don't build. So if you haven't thought of this already, you might understand it could be difficult to get bisect the history if large sections of your history don't build. I mean, how can I tell if it's seg faults if it doesn't build, right? So th this sort of is a broader discussion that I'll probably talk about in another video about um, testing density. The idea of testing density is how many of your commits meet a minimum testing criteria. So as an example, our minimum testing criteria here could be does, this, does, the, uh, does the executable build, yes or no? And if I can't guarantee that every one of these executables builds at a minimum, then if I have to track down some unrelated behavior, like a like we just talked about a seg fault or why does my button not work? Well, when you bisect and you land on one of these commits that doesn't build, the first thing you got to do is fix the fact that it can't build. So it becomes a nightmare. So uh, I'm not going to get too much into it, but basically if you can, you want every single commit in your repo to meet some type of minimum testing criteria. And you can accomplish that uh, through rebasing or a number of uh, different workflows um, that I'm not going to get into now. But just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're starting a new uh, project in Git, try to make sure that every one of your commits meets some minimum testing criteria. And for, for most projects, that'd be something like, does it build? All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to summarize like I usually do. To start a Git bisect, do Git bisect start. And then to mark your first bad commit, you do git bisect bad, and then the commit shot one of the bad commit, and then you have to give it one good commit, and you use the exact same notation. And then you're on your way, and you'll already be bisecting the tree, so then you test, and then as you test, you mark it either good or bad, rinse and repeat, and then you have the exact commit where something was introduced. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you find it useful, and I'll see you next time.